In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this dragon animation in three weeks. This was created for the internet's biggest render challenge, and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how I created it using Blender. Okay, so the first job was to sculpt and animate the dragon. We need to make sure the proportions are right for when we animate it, so we sculpt and rig a lower res model first. Using references, I blocked out and sculpted the base shape. I could then add an armature using the bird preset in Rigify, readjusting it and deleting the parts I didn't need, as well as adding a new setup for the arms and wings. Rigify is really versatile, as you can add new bones and in pose mode, you can select one of many types of bone chains or limbs, and when you click regenerate, it adds all of the relevant controls. Controls. To create the wings, I added an arm setup and then parented multiple tail bones to it for the controls of the wing. From here, I could test and adjust the proportions of the dragon and the rig by posing it in different positions. You can do this process really early on due to the low resolution sculpt. When I was happy with the proportions, I hand animated the dragon, blocking out the key poses and working out where I wanted to add the slow motion, before gradually refining the motion until I was happy. Now using various dragon and creature sculpting brushes, I was able to create a high res sculpt of the dragon, before retopologizing the mesh, subdividing it a few times with the multi-res modifier, and shrink wrapping it to the original sculpt to get the dragon details onto the retopologized mesh. This could then be UV unwrapped, where I took it into Substance Painter and textured it. The mouth, teeth, and eyes were additionally sculpted and textured using some noise and procedural textures. The wings were a low poly mesh with details sculpted in using a multi-res, and again textured in Substance Painter, mixing in a translucent shade to let some light through. I could then use a cloth simulation attaching the pin group vertices to the wings using a surface deform modifier, and using the shrink setting in the cloth sim it would maintain the wing shape as the armature moved. To add the fire effect in the mouth, I added three lights increasing in brightness, and a plane with a noise texture that refracts the light to create a heat distortion effect. Next was the terrain. I subdivided some cubes and sculpted different parts of the landscape to fit in with the dragon animation and the overall composition, adding detail using rock brushes. I could then retopologize this, adding the detail again using the multi-res modifier, all to make the scene run smoother. Using textures from Polygon, I created various rock and grass materials with texture painting and noise masks for the landscape and the small huts were created using various Megascans assets. I then used the Geoscatter add-on to paint on different grass layers and plants to add extra detail. To light the scene, I used an overcast HDRI, then added lots of carefully placed area lights to add a sunlight glow coming from behind the dragon, and some large planes to create more shadow on one side. The same overall process was used to create the foreground landscape, sculpting, retopologizing, texturing, and scattering plants, and using Megascans rocks to create the foreground parallax effect. Now for the character. This was just an adapted Mixmo character that I connected to a new Rigify rig. I then animated them holding a staff to fit in with the slow motion. To create the cloth simulation, I made a low poly mesh of the clothing and created a low poly collision mesh for the character. I was able to keyframe the speed multiplier part way through in the simulation settings to match the slow motion of the scene. This low poly mesh was used to get the overall large movements. I could then duplicate this mesh, subdivide it, and sculpt on some detail with a multi-res. Then similar to the dragon wing, I could pin it in various areas to the low poly mesh and then simulate this cloth. This meant it would create smaller detailed folds and waves, but would still follow the main movement of the cloth. This was UV unwrapped and given a pattern texture. To add the glowing markings, I exported the UV image texture, marking where the parts of the cloth are, and using the free software Krita, I could paint on some symbols and markings symmetrically with various brushes, which could be exported and plugged into an emission shader in Blender. To add the growing effect, I imported the image into a grease pencil Blender file and was able to draw various masks on top of it. Then using the build modifier, it would shrink the masks, making the markings appear. This was exported as an image sequence to add into the robe material emission, which played out during the animation. A translucent shader was also mixed into the robe material so the lights would add a subtle glow to it. I modelled and textured a stylized staff, which I used the same process to get subtle growing markings on it, and the character was ready. I lit the foreground scene with a new group of lights that matched the evening lighting of the shot. I additionally used the animation feature in Geoscatter to add a small amount of grass movement. Finally for the background, I added an extra rock, and then created a matte painting in Photoshop using various mountain photos. A lot of this was done matching the lighting and colours, and blending using the content-aware fill tool. I could then separate this into different layers, importing them onto planes in Blender, adding some clouds too, all to get more of a parallax effect. After adding some camera shake, I could finally then render all of the different layers of the scene and composite them together in DaVinci Resolve, where I could add smoke and particle elements and some glow effects. Then finally, it was colour graded, and we have our final scene. Thank you.
you very much for watching, hit subscribe for more animation content and tutorials on the way, and I'll see you next time.